Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Dr. Shilpi here and this class is a continuation of medical emergencies in dental practice and the medical emergency that we'll be discussing today is asthma. So we'll be discussing about the types of asthma, the clinical features that is the signs and symptoms and the pathophysiology and the management for the same. So what is asthma? So asthma is defined as an inflammatory disorder which is characterized by reversible obstruction of the airways. Then there's one more terminology that is used in asthma which is status asthmaticus. So that is nothing but that is an acute exacerbation. There is sudden increase in the signs and symptoms of asthma that remains unresponsive to the treatment which is given by bronco dilators now what are the predisposing factors in asthma so asthma has been broadly classified into extrinsic asthma intrinsic asthma then mixed asthma which is a combination of both extrinsic and intrinsic asthma and status asthmaticus so coming to the first one which is the extrinsic asthma the predisposing factors the most important one is there can be there will be a history of atopy so atopy is nothing but a type 1 ty hypersensitivity reaction which is basically nothing but an allergic reaction which has some genetic predisposition to it then there can be some airborne allergens like you know plant pollens fungal spores which can give rise to extrinsic asthma and then certain kinds of foods like cow's milk then chocolates then certain drugs like aspirin and penicillin can also result in extrinsic asthma coming to the second variety which is uh, second type which is intrinsic asthma some non-allergic factors like you know uh, like uh, any kind of respiratory infection mainly the viral infections can result in intrinsic asthma so what do viral infection do they enhance the airway activity and therefore they can induce asthma then physical exertion that is exercise induced that is the most common type of asthma which can occur um, otherwise any kind of physical exertion then any kind of psychological uh, or stress which is there during the dental appointments is the most common reason why asthma can be initiated during dental appointments then there is mixed asthma which mainly results because of infection which is mainly respiratory tract infection and that is also a viral infection so coming to pathophysiology so in asthma there is increased sensitivity of the airways due to increased contractile response of the respiratory smooth muscle then due to abnormal generation and clearance of airways and due to abnormally sensitive cough reflex and this all occurs by either activation of the autonomic nervous system which results in maximum maximal constriction or due to immunologic or non-immunologic airway insults which can result in direct effect on smooth muscle by stimulation of mast cells or vagal reflexes. Also some allergic or presumed allergic factors which can result in bronchial hyperactivity or bronchoconstriction. Also there can be mucosal or submucosal edema and thickening of basement membrane and infiltration of leukocytes which can in turn lead to bronchospasm. Then coming to the signs and symptoms. So there can be wheezing, there can be dyspnea, there can be chest congestion, then there can be fatigue, there can be increased sweating, agitation, nasal flaring, there can be rise in blood pressure, there can be increase in heart rate. So uh, what happens in status asthmaticus now? There can be severe hypoxia, there can be cyanosis, there can be hypotension and there can be respiratory acidosis secondary to hypoxemia and hypercapnia because the patient is unable to breathe uh, properly there can be hypoxemia that is there's reduced oxygen in the blood and there is hypercapnia the amount of carbon dioxide which is present in the body increases in it 
then coming to prevention so proper medical and dialogue history needs to be taken and a patient should carry at least one rescue drug which can be used to terminate an acute episode of bronchospasm and the drugs that are most commonly used are beclomethasone inhaler then salbutamol inhaler and budesonide inhaler also chromolin sodium which is a mast cell stabilizer that can be used in the preventive management of extrinsic asthma then coming to dental therapy consideration if we are managing stress in few patients then it special care should be taken that barbiturates and opioids should not be administered because both increase the risk of bronchospasm so barbiturates they sensitize the respiratory reflexes and they increase the risk of bronchospasm whereas opioids they induce histamine release and they increase the risk of bronchospasm also in inhalation anesthetic agents such as ether they irritate the respiratory mucosa and they can induce bronchospasm similarly there is some controversy in the cases of uh, nitrous oxide and the use of nitrous oxide also if claustrophobic patients are being given any kind of anesthetic gases using nasal hood there are chances that it it can precipitate bronchospasm then in patients who have sensitivity to aspirin like drugs like aspirin where a special care needs to be taken in prescribing any kind of alternative nsaids because there can there is a lot of cross reactivity cross sensitivity between aspirin and other non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs then so many uh, uh, agents so many drugs contain sodium metabisulfite for example our local anesthetics contain that as antioxidants so even though the volume of bisulfite is very very minimal in these cases but bisulfite sensitive patients can suffer acute asthmatic uh, attacks after administration or so a special uh, care needs to be taken in these patients before administering local anesthetic then coming to management so management uh, has been divided into management of acute asthmatic episode and severe bronchospasm so in the acute uh, asthmatic episode the first procedure is termination of the dental procedure then the second step is positioning the patient so the positioning of the patient is always sitting upright to some degree with your arms thrown forward so the main reason for uh, this position is unknown and there's also modified position in which there's a forward leaning trunk and resting the forearms on the thighs it's also known as a tripod position and it's a modified position for relaxation so it is though, though there is no proof why this position is uh found to be the most comfortable but in one of the studies it has indicated that there is increased end expiratory level and active expiration in this position then uh, if the patient is not comfortable in this position then any position which in which the patient is comfortable the patient is made to sit in that position then any kind of dental materials that are present in the patient's mouth needs to be removed immediately then we need to calm the patient and patients uh, who have her history of acute episodes which were very very difficult to terminate in such patients special uh, care should be taken in calming down the patient then the next step is maintenance of circulation airway and breathing and then comes step d that is definitive care that is administration of oxygen can be done through full face mask through a nasal hood at the rate of 5 to 7 liter per minute then administration of bronchodilator so a bronchodilator aerosol inhaler should be placed within easy reach of the patient then aerosol inhalation of salbutamol can be given two sprays can be given 180 to 200 microgram by inhalation or by injection 0.5 mg subcutaneous or im can be given if we are administering it iv intravenous then 0.25 mg should be injected very very slowly and the main advantage of giving aerosol adrenergic bronchodilators is that it is put it is almost as effective as the ones who, which are administered through iv route and there is there are very very less side effects 
of the same and if the patient recovers after that subsequent dental care can be carried out if the patient as well as the doctor is willing for treatment and if the patient is completely fine we need to discharge the patient if the patient is not willing for the treatment then we need to reschedule an appointment for the next visit then coming to the management of severe bronchospasm so this, uh, the treatment of severe bronchospasm almost remains the same all the steps remain the same except there is some difference in the definitive care so after the administration of oxygen we need to administer at least three doses of aerosolized bronchodilator that is salbutamol uh, if it fails to resolve the episode then we need to call for assistance and we can start parental administration of bronchodilators like salbutamol and aminophilines. So salbutamol dosage has already been covered which was 0.5 uh, subcutaneous and uh, IM dose and if it was given IV we were giving it 0.25 uh, IV infusion or it was injected very very slowly whereas aminophilin dosage is slightly it differs in all the articles so we are not specifying in this class then injection of aqueous epinephrine can also be given so 0.3 ml of 1 is 2000 dilution can be given subcutaneously or IM or 3 ml of 1 is to 10,000 concentration can also be given dose should be repeated for every 30 to 60 minutes and it has to be given till the time the episode subsides and one very very important thing to remember is that 1 is 2000 should never be administered IV we should either give it subcutaneously or intramuscularly if it is not even after giving all these uh, dosages if it doesn't resolve we can try optional or other medications like isoproteronol hydrochloride can be tried or hydrocortisone sonium succinate 100 to 200 mg can be given via IV route and after that if the patient the everything resolves then we need to dispose the patient and if only if the patient is all right and both are willing for the treatment then we need to uh, carry out the treatment or we need to refer the patient or we need to hospitalize the patient if it doesn't subside or if the patient is all right then we can discharge the patient as well so that brings us to the end of this class that brings us to the end of the management of asthma so if you have any doubts or queries in this you can leave a message in the comment section below and if you've liked the video then please do hit the like button please share it with your friends and please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and thank you so much for watching thank and stay tuned for the next class thank you so much